Welcome to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. I'm so happy to have you here with me this Valentine's Day. We're spending it together, and that's a wonderful thing because this day is about love. And I love and appreciate all of my listeners. And I hope you're listening because you're feeling love for me. So let's share some love. Actually, I'm calling the show today, How Do I Be My Own Valentine? And we're going to talk about why I'm calling it that in just a moment. But first, I just want to welcome you. And say that I am, as most of you know, Paula Shaw. I am an author. I'm the author of Chakras, The Magnificent Seven, Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End, and Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. Those three books are all available on Amazon. And uh, also, if you would like to learn more about me, or my work, or if you'd like to schedule a complimentary 20-minute session with me, you can go to paulashaw.com. And by the way, there's a great free offer there when you go to that page, and that is list of 20 things to say, 20 things not to say when you are engaged in difficult conversations. And I'm telling you, that list is a must-have to keep in your purse or your glove box or wherever so you can refer to it if you're going into any kind of a difficult emotional conversation. Because there are some very clear do's and very clear don'ts that can really help that conversation to be effective and even healing. So please go to polishaw.com and get that list. Also, if you'd like to learn more about Change It Up Radio, if you'd like to find out about being a guest or a sponsor on this show, you can get that information at changeitupradio.com. That's changeitupradio.com. All right. We are going to be talking today about this whole thing we know as Valentine's Day. <laughs> I laugh because Valentine's Day is is a loaded day, isn't it? I think most people have a a love or a hate relationship with Valentine's Day. Just this morning, I was doing a session with a client who said, "Oh, my husband doesn't do Valentine's Day; he hates it." And I said, "Oh, well, what about you?" Well, I loved it, but There's no sense in getting into it now, she said. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's so true of so many of us. And you know, it it just makes me sad because I I can tell you almost without exception, most of the men clients I've ever worked with did not like Valentine's Day. And the reason is because they felt like they can never get it right. You know, we ladies forget that men like very clear instructions. They like to be told what to do. You know, it's like if you say, can you come out of the cave? They want to know what do you want them to do when they come out of the cave? It's, it's, um, it's part of the way their brains work. You know, they're very focused. They're very linear thinking. They're problem solvers. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and they can focus really well on one thing. And that comes from the days when they were the hunter providers. They were the ones that kept the family alive. They had to be able to be very focused on bringing home food, provisions for their families. And so from that from that time to this very day, they deal best with very specific instructions about what to do when we want them to come out of whatever else they were doing, whether it's watching the game, working in the garage, you know, working on the car, whatever it is they're doing. 
they like very specific instructions about what we need from them. So it can be very difficult for them to know what to do on Valentine's Day because we girls always feel like if you really love me, you'll know what to do. You'll think of something wonderful that makes me feel special. They hate that. They really hate that because they don't know exactly what to do. And, and if they don't do the right thing, they know they're going to be in the doghouse. So you see what I'm saying? It's a day that's kind of loaded. It's, it's a perfectly made creation for disaster. <laughs> well, my guest today is going to be helping us with several things. But mainly, we're going to be addressing those of you who don't have that partner on Valentine's Day. Those of you that may even be feeling sad because you're not sharing this day with someone else. That can be a really tough thing for us. It can be a really tough thing because we're all kind of groomed by Hallmark and by TV commercials and by the books we've read and the movies we've seen that Valentine's Day only counts if there's someone who loves you romantically on this day, someone who's dying to just spend this day with you and make you feel happy and special and so loved. But what if you're in one of those phases in life where the romantic relationship doesn't exist right now, where that person isn't there? It's where I am, and many, many other people I know are in the same situation, both men and women. My daughter, who, as a matter of fact, is in that situation, is um, initiating something with her girlfriends on this day that they call Galentine's Day. I love that, right? Let the girls get together and have a fabulous time. You know, I remember one year, this is actually one of my favorite stories, I had no one to be with on Valentine's Day, but I wanted to take good care of myself. I wanted to put myself in a situation where I would still have a beautiful day. So I scheduled a massage. Well, I went to this fabulous person who ended up giving me a two and a half hour massage after having given me a little glass of champagne when I arrived. When I told my girlfriends about that, that experience, without exception, every one of them, every one of them said, oh, I would have so rather had that Valentine's Day <laughs> than what I had. So there's a message here, though, and it's not get a massage on Valentine's Day, though that's not a bad idea. But the message is, to love yourself and to do something self-loving on Valentine's Day. However, I have been a therapist for like 28 years, so I know loving yourself is not the easiest thing in the world for most of us. And there are a lot of good reasons for that. You know, many of us grew up with parents who shamed us as a way of trying to discipline us who um, maybe were very critical, maybe were judgmental, maybe had to give a lot of attention to one of our siblings. And so the message we got in our little child brains was, I'm not worthy of love, or I'm not worthy of attention. I don't matter. And those messages live in the subconscious mind right down to this day. I'm 70 years down the road in my life, and it was a long time ago that I might have gotten those kinds of messages from my parents. But my subconscious mind holds on to everything I've ever learned, everything I've ever experienced. And so if those experiences lead to me being very critical and and self-judging, then 
I don't even know maybe why I do it, but I do it. You know, those things we do that we go, God, I hate myself when I do that. Why do I do that? Those kinds of experiences, those kinds of behaviors come from subconscious beliefs that we hold about ourselves. Some of our subconscious beliefs are great. Some of our subconscious beliefs are, wow, I'm really creative. I'm such a good artist. I always know just the right thing to say. There are positive subconscious beliefs, but the ones that seem to really be a problem are the negative, the limiting subconscious beliefs, the beliefs that give us messages that are incorrect, messages that are really truly lies that stemmed from misinformation or maybe better put misperception by our little child immature minds. You know, for example, if your mother is always giving attention to a sick sibling, you don't have the cognitive ability as a small child to understand why that's happening. So you interpret it from your own way of thinking. And the normal natural way for children to think is both egocentric and magical. So if mom's always giving attention to somebody else, I interpret that as somehow my fault. I'm not worthy. I don't deserve love and attention. And those beliefs get locked in there and they can haunt us for years <clears throat> and years to come. So in our next segment, we're going to be looking at what can we do about that? How can we change that? How can we become more self-loving? And I will be aided in that endeavor by Joy White Peacock. So stay with us. We'll be talking about all that in just a moment. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw. Well, I'm very excited about this segment because it's Valentine's Day. And as promised, we're going to be talking with someone who has a lot of expertise in learning to love herself. She is a fascinating woman. She's a stress and trauma expert and an ex-corporate executive and an accidental shaman. Her name is Joy White Peacock. She is a fascinating woman. She has had six near-death experiences and, and has had the doctors give up on her at least five times. She's certified in more than a dozen holistic healing modalities. So she is more than equipped to be helping you and helping herself, which she has done in her lifetime. So without any further ado, let's meet Joy White Peacock. Welcome, Joy. Thank you, sweetheart. It's lovely to be on the show. It's and so good to have you. Yes. Now, you first know, um, with uh, our beliefs preventing us in so many ways from loving ourselves. Mm, it's so true, uh, isn't it? So, yes. So yeah, we could, sorry. <laughs> before you before you start, Joy, I, I would just love you to give a little background. What how did you die and come back six times? Was there an ongoing condition? I mean, it feels no, like really, no, it's um it's been a very strange life. Uh the first time I died, I was 15. I flew off a cliff on a motorbike and uh was declared dead on the operating table for two and a half minutes. And oh. um, when I was returned, they told me I'd never walk again. They wanted to amputate my leg. I told the doctor I'd not only walk, I'd dance on his grave. And that's actually how I became a boring and Latin silver medal winning dancer. Um, <laughs> the next time was uh, 24. I was hit by a drunk driver and all of the injuries from the motorbike accident. There's, there's just been multiple ones. If you want me to, I mean, each one has been different. Basically, every time I've died, I've been sent back with different skills and perspectives and uncommon abilities to help others. 
I and think that's fascinating. And I, you know, there, there's even a show on right now, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, on Netflix called Surviving Death. And the first episode is all about people who have had near-death experiences. They definitely should have had you on that show. Yeah, but I'll have to go and watch it. Having but. been a grief therapist for many years, I've done a lot of reading about near-death experiences. And a couple of things it seems people have in common, many times they come back with gifts that they didn't have before, abilities they didn't have before. And many times they, they come back having been reluctant to return because where they were felt so good. Oh yeah, I was not happy to be returned. Uh, but I, I, I'm living proof that you only get to die when you're supposed to. <laughs> and I'm, I'm also living proof that incurable means curable only from within. Um, from I, as you mentioned, I've actually been diagnosed on six separate occasions, completely unrelated by doctors who are saying you're not going to survive this. Whether uh, like with the drunk driver, doctors said I'd be dead or brain dead by the time I was thirty, oh. um, because every time I went into stress, the uh, my spinal injuries were such that the soft tissue would swell at the base of my neck, blood would stop going to my brain, and I would have about three minutes before I blacked out. And I never knew if I would wake up from any of the blackouts. And it was a very stressful time. So I was blacking out multiple times a day. Um, oh, so I became a world expert on clearing stress in three minutes or less. <laughs> I know you talked about that the last time you were on our show. Yes. And it was, but it was in the incurable diagnoses that I learned to love myself. This is the only way that I have survived all of the crazy, crazy things um that this life has qualified me to do and be now mm. so take us through a little bit of that you know i i think lots of people have been through adversity or they've been through difficult times but they didn't come out on the other side loving themselves so how not, it's, it's not uh, let, let me share um a story from from the, the motorbike accident yeah as i said the, the doctors uh wanted to amputate my leg i didn't let them but i did to myself what I wouldn't let the doctors do. I metaphorically amputated my own leg by making it my bad leg. The I, hands up if anybody relates to this, the, mm -hmm. when the pain is so great and you don't know what else to do and who else has been trained to just soldier on and ignore it? Oh my, yeah, yeah. We can all raise our hand on that one, huh? Exactly, that was all I knew how to do. So I, I ignored the pain and I locked it away and, and, I, and I hated my leg. And I wondered why it wouldn't heal. Mm -hmm. I had to learn that you cannot heal what you do not own. Yeah. It was only when I learned to treat my pain like a crying child. And instead of being horrible to my leg, I, I held my precious leg and said, I am so sorry that mm -hmm. I have been so awful to you. You are not a bad leg. You are a wonderful leg. You reach all the way to the ground. You still carry me around and do your best despite everything that's happened. I am so sorry mm. that I have made you wrong mm. and bad. I am listening now so that you do not have to yell at me anymore. What do you need, precious leg? How mm. can I help you heal? I so relate to that story and it is so powerful, Joy. I had a knee and, and that I was hurting with and I was into fitness. I was into working out. I did not have time for a knee that was swollen and painful. So I kept walking, I kept doing my thing. And one day I was with a doctor who I was seeing who was a homeopath. And he said to me, what are you doing for your knee? And I said, I don't have time to do anything. You know, I'm still working out. I'm doing this. I'm doing it. And he said, stop. This was a doctor. He said, stop. I want you to get in a hot bath tonight. I want you to soothe that knee. I want you to pet it and tell it you love it and apologize for what you have been doing. And, you know, it's like, like none of us would walk past a crying child sitting on the curb and do nothing, right? But you're right. It's like, Pain is the body's way of crying out and saying, I need help. Do something different here. So yes. you're right on the money with that. I think it's yep. 
Yeah, but most of us don't do that. We are taught, oh, pain, I don't like that message. And so we take a pill or ignore it, which is a lot like putting masking tape on the oil warning light in the car because you don't like the message that it's sending. It's never long-term helpful. It is going to destroy you eventually. And exactly, exactly. So, so loving the parts of you that, that you've been hating will transform your life. Mm. Treating your pain like a crying child instead of like an enemy will change everything. I, I, I've, I've used this for, for everything. Currently, right now, I'm in a, a challenging, I'm growing back my jaw. Um, and this is the sixth um, incurable diagnosis. I am the poster child for don't get dental implants if you're at all sensitive to metal. They nearly killed me. Oh my and, goodness. Uh, yeah, so mm. it doesn't matter what part of your body it is that you're hating on. Mm -hmm. just, just right now, if you're watching this, is there a part of your body that you've been really horrid to? Mm -hmm. I bet there is. Come on, I know you can think of it. Is there a part of you that you just don't love? Just mm -hmm. for a moment, put your hands on that part of your body. Mm -hmm. And just for a moment, send love and gratitude and imagine what your life would be like if you didn't have that part of your body. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even have to be a part of you that, that, that hurts. I used to hate my bum. No, I it was it's, it's I just hated my bum. It it's 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 large and it's 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 just. Ugh. And then I met a friend who didn't have a bum. She oh. didn't have really anything. Her her body ended at her torso. Um, no hips, no legs, no arms. She oh. does the most amazing painting by mouth you've ever seen in your entire life. And I looked at her and realized, because she's a really happy, beautiful being in, in, in Mexico, I realized, oh my God. Okay, and, and that night I went home, and just like you talked about, I got in the bath, and I gave thanks for my bum. I am so sorry, dear bum, for always hating on you. You are not a horrible bum. You are a very fine bum, and I'm very comfortable to sit on, and I'm going to stop hating on you now. I'm just going to start appreciating you because life would be a whole lot harder without you. Amen, sister. I love that story. That's really good, and it's so true. We're so great at criticizing ourselves and not acknowledging the things that are working that we probably should be turning gratitude for it and not criticism. Yes, it will always work very much better if you do that. Amen. But why so that's your joy scripture, my darling, if you are watching this, to not just uh, to, to first of all, to send love and, and I am listening. Stop treating your pain like an enemy mm. and start listening to it because your pain has a voice. And it's desperately trying to tell you something. Right. When you learn to listen to it as a friend, what do you need? You will it will start giving you answers. And if there's a part of your body that you just think is ugly, think about what it would be like if you did not have that body part. Mm -hmm. And then just take a few minutes to talk to it. Oh my goodness! I you know I, I actually think you're really useful, and I'm so sorry. I've been hating on you. So true. So true. And you know what? I, I'm also thinking about joy. For a lot of people, the the pain is emotional or the self-hatred piece is hating something they do or something they can't seem to master or a change they can't make. And I don't I don't want to start you on that answer yet because we're going to have to go to a break in a second. But I have a feeling that many people, especially if people are, are without a partner on Valentine's Day, one of the reasons they think that they're not with anybody is that something about them is defective or something about them is unlovable. So it's kind of like, how do I love myself when nobody else loves me and has showed me how? But as you and I know, the answer has to begin with loving yourself before that's going to be created in the real world. So let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, I would love you to speak about that. We will be right back.
Okay, are you ready, Joy? Yeah, those are two radically different subjects, darling. I, I'm not sure which, I, I'll talk about the second one, not the first one, because they're, they're two very different uh, topics. Okay. Um, the, emo um, the, the emotional pain? Um, yeah, the, yeah, hang on a minute, let me just, because you're going in different directions. Um, okay, got it. All right, here we go. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw and my guest today, Joy White Peacock. And we are talking about Valentine's Day. We're talking about love. We're talking about self-love, how to create it, what to do when you're not feeling it, and how important it really is. So in our last segment, and if you're just joining us, please go back when the show is over and listen to the beginning because Joy has shared with us some important things about when a part of our body isn't working well or is creating pain for us, how to address that, how to help to heal it from within and from your attitude about your that particular body part. But we're also talking now about what if what we find a difficult time loving about ourselves is something in the way we feel mm. or the way we think or a behavior that we're having a hard time changing or mastering. So, Joy, what do you think is the first thing a person needs to do if they find themselves in a situation like I just described? You described a whole variety of situations there, Paula. Um, so it's it's favorite. You know, your favorite. <laughs> okay, so you know, my North American friends dubbed me the wish granter because people bring me their wishes for their health and their happiness, and I give them the tools and skills and to be able and help them to clear those wishes. Mm -hmm. And the most common wish is joy. I just want to be happy. And the most common thing through this thread is most of these people have no idea what would even make them happy. Mm -hmm. So let me start off by saying, until you know what makes you happy, you are probably not going to get there. Waiting around for somebody to give us what makes us happy mm -hmm. is an absolute recipe for disaster. But we are not trained in any way. In fact, we're trained in the opposite way. We're trying to think of everybody first except ourselves. Yes. And this is what causes an enormous amount of pain and dis-ease and disharmony. Um, mm -hmm. I ask you just for a minute to think about, has it really ever worked to give to everybody else except yourself? Has it really worked to, to, to be in a position where, okay, I'm just going to give and give and give and somebody someday is going to give me what it is that I want? Mm -hmm. When you when you reset yourself and today valentine's day is the perfect day to sit down and start to find out what you want what makes you happy what brings you joy so i've got a couple of joy descriptions for you to start first of all write a list of all of the things that make you happy and do one of those things at least off that list every single day and add to the list and second the the next thing i'm, I'm trying to to think of, of, of what you wanted me <laughs> the what well, 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 first frame references are, are set uh before age seven most of our beliefs about mm. who we are and how we're formed is is all in our first seven years yeah and um just for a moment, imagine if you had a little child in the middle of the room and you, you told them you're, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're worthless, you're this, you're that. What would happen to that little child? I can tell you one thing, it would never probably grow into its fullest expression in ease and grace. Right. What happens when we see that little child and we, and we feed it, you're so amazing, there's no such thing as mistakes, you can do this. It's, that child is able to grow. Now, most of us have a little child inside of us that is constantly calling out, please, please give me what I'm, I'm afraid we can't do this. I don't, we're stupid, we can't. And we're making that child wrong and bad. 
Mm -hmm. So just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes, if that's comfortable for you or not. And listen to the voices in your head that are maybe saying things that about you you're never going to and you can't. Just for a moment, ask how old is that voice? How old is that aspect of me? This is the first thing that comes to your mind. Chances are it's a very young aspect. Right now, I want you to imagine that young aspect right in front of you. Maybe pick them up and put them on your knee and cover their dear little face in kisses and tell them what's true. Tell them what you as an adult know. That God didn't make everybody perfect, but when it came to you, it's like, oh, darn, you know, no, I screwed that up. Well, there's nothing I can do. I'll just have to send them out like that. I'm only God. That didn't happen. Tell this precious child what's true, how loved they are, instead of uh, believing that these voices are enemies. What if the negative voices in your head are this, these young aspects of you that are crying out for reassurance, for love, for help, to be told what really is true? So hold them right now and look at them and realize, wow, there's nothing wrong with this beautiful child. They are absolutely as perfect as every other being on the planet. And show them and tell them what it is that you know now. And if every time you have that negative voice in your head instead of, treating it like the pain we were talking about earlier but saying oh oh there's some aspect of me that's calling out for help right now and go to that aspect and give them what it is that they need the love and the reassurance and watch your life change you know joy i i am so in alignment with the truth of that and how important it is just this morning in in a session i was doing I helped a client, we were doing a, a little kind of a visualization work and what became very clear, my client was feeling uh, upset and defensive when her husband would tell her how to do something. She felt it devalued her. And he, and I was trying to explain to her that he was probably coming from feeling devalued himself. So he needed to tell everybody else how to, how to do it, you know, so he could feel better. And what we realized in the discussion was they both were coming from the same wound. They both were feeling not good enough. And so in her, it responded with anger, like, don't tell me what to do. And with him, it was, let me tell you what to do. So you'll think I'm valuable and important. And I think that's such an, an important point that so often when people are having problem in relationships, it's their inner kids. It's the inner child or the inner adolescent, both being wounded that are attacking each other from their pain place, yes. not from love, right? So exactly, exactly. So I'm going to give you a joy scription. Um, that will take the pressure off every single relationship in your life. And that is give yourself what it is that you need mm -hmm. so that you have it to give. Stop waiting for your friends, your husband, your children, whatever, to give you what it is that you need. Give yourself what it is that you want to give to the world and then give from the overflow. If you do this and you're coming from a position of, of juiciness and power and love instead of neediness and wantingness, mm -hmm. if you want to be able to attract somebody on not just for Valentine's Day but at all, you're ever so much more attractive when you're not needy. Mm -hmm. And the way to not be needy is by giving yourself what it is that you want. Exactly. I know how hard it is to be single on Valentine's Day. I do. And I also know that the antidote, and I, I know it's like, oh, well, it's not the same. No, it's not the same. Treating yourself as you want to be treated mm -hmm. sends a message to the universe. This is how I expect to be treated. And so 
this is what begins to come to you from the people that you know, from the people that you want to attract. Treat yourself as a beloved so that the universe knows, oh, okay, fine. That's how it goes. That's what, sh that's what they expect. And things will begin to shift in you and in the people around you. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a good example to your children, this is a really good way to start because it's not what we were trained to do. And we obviously want our children to be able to have everything. So teach them by example how to give that to yourself so that you have it to give. You know, um, what, uh, just, oh, sorry, carry on. What's so true about that, too? I, you know, I've been trained in the tools and methods of energy psychology. So I look at everything from the perspective of energy. And you cannot attract something that you're not a vibrational match for. And so when you are loving yourself and giving yourself that joy, you're in your best position to attract that from somebody else because the energy is a match. The yes. energy, you know, it is, is matching. So it's easier to bring it in. But if yes. you're, you know, in the doldrums and feeling depressed and sorry for yourself and feeling unlovable, then you attract more of that. And unfortunately, too many people are what I call miscreating. They're creating from what they lack and not from what they want. Mm -hmm. Because we can't create something great from a, a vibration of something that's not great. We got to get our vibration on par with what we want. So when we come back from this break, Joy, let's talk a little bit about that. We will be right back. All right, Miss right. Joy. No okay, just so you know, I'm not Joy White Peacock, just Joy, please. That's all. Oh, all right. Yeah, Joy is who I am. White Peacock woman, white dragon risen. These are what I am, but I'm just Joy. Got it. Thank you. All right. Um, Don't oh, change topic. Let's remember at the what what contact information do you want to give? Experiencejoy.com. Okay. So be I'll sure. Give it a Mm -hmm. I'll give them a gift in this next segment. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, what specifically did you want me to talk about? Just have, don't change subjects on me. <laughs> yeah, I won't change it. Well, Thank I'll you. just I'll just bring it back and we'll um I'm let's start with how they can contact you and and the gift and all of that. Okay. I'll just tell them what we've been um, I recap. I need to recap the show in every segment that when I come back. Okay. So, I'll recap and then I'll say, if you would like to get a hold of Joy, and then we can just go from there. We were talking about being an energetic match for what you want yes. to create. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio here with Paula Shaw and my guest, Joy. She has been talking with us today about creating just that. It's Valentine's Day, and we've been talking about ways to be more self-loving to your body, to your mind, to your emotions, to be self-loving on every level. So if you missed the segments prior to this, be sure you go back and listen to the show because there was a lot of good tips that have been given today from Ms. Joy. And I think you're going to want to hear them particularly if you're alone this Valentine's Day and not feeling very good about that. So first of all, Joy, before we get started talking again, because it just seems to go by so quickly, please tell people how they can reach out to you or learn more about you. My website is experiencejoy.com. And actually, if you go there and uh, click on the, the little link, help me um, with stress, I will send you a 15 minute video that shows you how to relax instantly, how to keep a clear head no matter what's going on and how to clear stress from your body because stress is the real pandemic and we don't need to feel stressed because we're single on Valentine's Day or any other time. And this will definitely help. And all I ask is when you find out how well these tools work, share them. Everybody needs to know these things. And that's experiencejoy.com. Oh, and this is something else that I, I really wanted to, to say. Um, on the 11th of February, this, this new moon, uh, and for 11 days from that, so we're right um, in the middle of it, I'm doing a praise challenge, which is planting radical 
appreciation in someone's energy. Um, I've been, there's, there's so many people out there who we're all so isolated and there's so many people mm. who are increasingly desperate and people dying, literally dying because they don't think they matter. And so this challenge that I've created, my Facebook page is uh, Joy White Peacock. Um, and the, the challenge is to bring people into every day for 11 days, teach them how to reach out and offer radical appreciation to different people and how to raise themselves up and everybody around them by doing that. And yeah. we're creating a community to, to just reach out from our hearts to say, I am so grateful for you. And this is why, this is what your light does in the world. This is what you mean to me. These things can not only help people out of depression, they can literally save a life. Oh. And it's a gorgeous thing to do on Valentine's Day. Give love, give what it is that you want to receive. Right. Give it to yourself, from yourself. And so, yes, please join the praise challenge on Facebook. Oh, I love that, the praise Thank challenge. You. you know, I actually know somebody who set a similar goal to that, where at least once or twice, or maybe I think three times every day, they would just acknowledge somebody in, in some way of appreciate, you know, acknowledge their appreciation of them in their lives. And in one case, for sure, that she told me about, she did save somebody from suicide because they said, I was feeling like I didn't matter to anybody and there was no reason to go forward. Yes. So it's a and powerful true thing. More than ever. Oh, so true. That's right. It's yeah. so happening at 11 o'clock Pacific time every single day for 11 days from February the 11th. Oh, perfect. So mm -hmm. 11 o'clock acknowledge somebody with praise and so just pop on to the the praise uh challenges uh p period r period a period so it's placing radical acceptance in someone's energy ah nice nice but the and we will lead you through it we'll guide you through it and it's the community that will help you to mm -hmm. uplift yourself and everyone around you and are you doing this through live streaming at 11 o'clock on your page <laughs> yes um, yep, yeah, hopping on live stream, you can ask questions. There's prizes um, for the, you know, you document what happens when you praise somebody or if you've just been praised, what happened for you. Um, and I'm gathering all of the best stories and turning them into a, a multimedia ebook to be able to bring inspiration to others because it's just such a gorgeous way to, to spread an experience and be loved in mm. 2021. Hmm, I think that is so cool. And it's so in alignment with what we were just talking about that people want to bring, first of all, people make the mistake, I think, of thinking the only way I can be happy is if good things happen out there. The truth is, you need to be happy in here. And that then attracts good things out there. Yes. And so like doing what you're describing, Joy, appreciating others, showing love to others, that actually helps you attract love and appreciation to yourself, right? Because so now fun. you're a vibrational match. Exactly. And it activates serotonin and dopamine and all of the feel good chemicals when we do this and when we receive it. It's just, it, yes. it, it's a win win for everybody. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. So here we are on Valentine's Day. And as we've acknowledged, some people are feeling sad or lonely because there's nobody else with them right now uh, in a romantic sense. And some people who have a partner are disappointed in the way that the day came down. And I just wonder, Joy, do you have any thoughts or tips for anybody that might be listening that's feeling a little sad or disappointed about their Valentine's Day today. Write yourself a love letter. You can, I'll, I'll give you a couple of options. Mm. If, if you have a wounded child that is going, I knew it was going to work out to be really bad, write them a love letter. Mm. If you're feeling just, <sighs> write your, let your future self write you a love letter mm. let it include all of the things that are lovely about you write this letter that you with the words that that you long 
to hear from your beloved or from the beloved that you're manifesting. Mm. Write yourself a love letter, darling. I think that's a very, very great tip. And I might add to that, just treat yourself. You don't okay. have to have somebody else be there to light a candle or take a hot bath or make yourself something beautiful to eat or open a really lovely bottle of wine, put flowers on your table. You deserve all of that, whether somebody else gives it to you or not. Yes, be the person that gives you what you need and you will remove the burden from every relationship in your life. Nobody needs that burden or responsibility of giving you what it is that you think you need. You nailed it um, earlier when you said, oh, you know, there, there's people out there going, if you loved me, you would know. No, they don't. Men are an entirely different species. You know that's true. Oh, yeah. When you give yourself what you need, you remove that burden and all of a sudden you're not coming from a, from a, a place where it's, you know, it's, that wasn't enough. Because you'll already have enough and anything that anybody gives you will be enough. Give yourself what you need. Spoil yourself. Treat yourself as you want to be treated and watch what happens around you. Your husband might go, oh, okay, so that's how it works. Uh, exactly. Yes, you're teaching him how to treat you and how you treat yourself. And I think it's that old analogy. If your cup is full, then anything else you're given is overflow. It's extra. But if and your everybody cup, bathes in that overflow and benefits yeah. from that overflow, and it's just yummy. It's so true. And so that, then it becomes a win-win all the way around, right? Yes, absolutely. Because what do you get when you squeeze an orange? You, know, you don't get lemon juice or pickle juice or watermelon juice. You get orange juice because the orange can only give you what it has inside of it. Mm -hmm. And just like the orange, when you're put in a situation and squeezed, you will give what it is that you have got inside of you. And if you have spent your whole life giving to everybody except yourself, then chances are when you're squeezed, what's going to come out, it's going to be pretty dry and maybe bitter. Mm. Juice up so that when you're squeezed, what you give is what you've given yourself, love and joy and gratitude. Oh, Joy, that was so beautiful. And what a perfect place for us to end our conversation today. So I want to thank you so much for the beautiful pearls of wisdom that you shared today. And again, will you remind us the website that people can go to to experiencejoy.com. You can remember that. Experiencejoy.com. I love that. Thank you for having me, Lynn, darling. I really appreciate the light that you bring and the difference that you make to so many lives, not only through this, um, radio show, but in just the way you are in the world, Paula, you're a rock star on so many levels. And I'm still frankly stunned that you said you're 70. What? You are clearly walking your talk as what it is like and what you, you appear as when you're embodying light and you have a determined mission to bring that light to the world. Thank you for the example that you are. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you. That was really beautiful. And I'm receiving that with all the love that came from it. That's a beautiful Valentine's gift. <laughs> thank you. Yes, I love it. <laughs> and thank you to my listeners. Remember that you can hear us here on AM 1170 and FM 96.1, The Answer on Sunday evenings at nine o'clock. And you can hear us on every major podcast platform. We have a YouTube channel, changeitupradio.com. We've got Facebook and Instagram, in the same name. So please share this show with all your friends. Joy is a gift, and we all need more joy, don't we? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> spread her around and share her with everybody. <laughs> Blessings to you all, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy love, happy love day. Happy love day. Mwah everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.